Uh, well, hello everyone. Nice to see you all here. Uh, it feels like for me I haven't been in WordCamps for ages now, and I missed also that for WordCamp Europe. So, uh, like to be here finally in WordCamp Finland. Um, I'll be talking about open source today, and because I want to be it to be as open as possible. I'm having this talk in English, which I usually don't do. I talk in Finnish most of the time. But for inclusivity and for English speaking people here, I want this to be as, as open as possible. So, while some of you may know me already by name or face, I'll introduce myself first. Uh, a bit about me. Uh, I'm currently CTO at, at the company I founded with a designer friend, Juha, over there in the corner. Uh, we do WordPress websites, mostly for businesses, and uh, we have been doing this for 10 years now. And we had just had our 10, 10 years anniversary. Uh, personally, I've been doing WordPress since uh, 2005 or something. It was WordPress 1.5, I think back in the days uh, and since I've contributed to open source project different type of those those things very few of my open source contributions are about WordPress uh, except the team I developed the starter team but other than that I haven't been very active in WordPress community but it's just me and it's just the way I do things I do CSS mostly so so it's a bit tight uh, area there. So uh, there are now like 10, 11 people working in our company and it's been fun doing things with WordPress. So that's basically briefly about me. I like to run in the forest and that's why I put the picture about running there. So running is really close to my heart and tomorrow I will be running half, mar half marathon in a race. Also this week's like to uh, achievements to speak and to run, <laughs> in a sense. Uh, let's start ab about with a joke. Uh, maybe GitHub guys know a bit about this one. Uh, but uh, follow up question and a poll. Uh, how many of you have uh, a profile on GitHub, GitLab, Codeberg, uh, things like that, Bitbucket? Quite a few. Uh, how many of you have a repository you contribute to or uh, have started by yourself? How about if not uh, by the company you are working with something of your own? Okay, nice. Uh, have any of you sent any pull requests to any outside repositories? Nice. All right, how about WordPress? How many of you contribute to WordPress in any way? Cool, nice. Is there anyone in the crowd who doesn't use Git but uh, Mercury or SVN or something else? Okay, not anymore. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> cool. So, open source, I think, is the internet mostly because the um, internet was built on those principles uh, by the scientist Tim Bernal Lee. Uh, he meant it as a freely distributed open service and distributed information and internet would be really much different place if it was built for, for, for uh, originally by someone else than uh, a computer scientist if it was built from a commercial perspective so i think internet is partly the essence of, of the open source and for me it happened so that um, I first learned to code by looking the source of the things and it was back in the 90s I was a little boy like 9 or 10 in the picture and my dad gave gave me his old computer and I was instantly hooked in the websites and oh, in, in my world open source works, works like that that everything is in the, in the internet is open that's the origin and I got Adobe Page Mill uh, 2.0 or something from the PC Mac uh, free CD or something and then later I got into Adobe Page Mill 3.0 and 
uh, it has this fun, <laughs> fun uh, code editor, and there was later this tab you could preview the, the code you were, you were writing in most HTML, it was for me, and then CSS, and I got into styling things. My background is very front end based. I liked how the things looked in the browser and how I could like manipulate the source code to make it look like something else. Uh, Adobe PageMill wasn't really good software to do that because every time I went to the preview mode and back to the code mode it had, had added a bunch of lot of useless code I had to clean up next time I went to the code mode but it was fun and it still is but this is where it started and I was hooked to the code and openness of it um, and later of course I moved on to Notepad++ plus plus and the, the, and the 2000 after millennium VS code and stuff like that came in so it got a lot easier um, but for me it was like this basically then open source was viewing um, other websites and it was like hey look at this cool website how how did they made it make it and uh, it was basically HTML maybe JavaScript, but no dynamic code. So it was really easy to understand and look to the code and copy and paste and steal the code and make it your look like you and uh, do your stuff. So that's what I loved. And there were no GitHub, or GitLab or anything, or I think version control of Git came 2005 or something. And it was different, everything was uh, hard-coded everywhere, but uh, it was the open source for me. The subversion came, but I never really used subversion. Uh, it was kind of hard to use and clumsy, and, and Git, of course, uh, made it better. So, um, nowadays it's much harder to do this because, of course, they are, like if you copy the source code of the website, it's like the start tag and everything is uh, stuffed inside the div and it's a single page up or something and you can't really use it, everything is obfuscated and minified and it's not really open, it's not open source at least. You have to look for the repository and get it, get it right and compile the code and then you have the website maybe. So uh, it was much simpler back, back then. But today we, we all know these tools, WordPress, one of the biggest of those, but these are all open source. And you can imagine if we don't, wouldn't have any of these, it would be much harder to do what we do. It would be building about building your own tools, mostly like what we used to do. Uh, but with open source, things are easier and things are uh, things are available to us, and we can do our our own thing much much easier in this way back in the days we built our own tools uh, i remember building a todo app before todoist and i remember building uh, a lightweight cms before wordpress or hacking other uh, kind of open source cmss before wordpress but it's, it wasn't as much fun because you were alone but with open source, you are not alone. You have thousands, tens of thousands, millions, millions of people out there that do the same thing. So that's why it's really great. And open source is kind of fun because it doesn't care if you are a company or, or, or a person. Uh, no matter what, what you think about big corporations like Google or Microsoft or, or those ones, they contribute a lot and help building better tools so so it's really really great open source also open opens jobs and it's funny that these are free tools but uh, people are getting paid to develop those tools so um, you may notice i don't list much downsides in this talk about open source of course there are downsides uh, but those are mostly not about open source itself. It's the life uh, 
they are they will be always negative commenting or stubborn maintainers who don't give uh, who don't accept full requests or do anything and keep everything there on themselves. But then there are forks. Of course, there can there, there can be complicated forks. But all of these things are like uh, the downside of doing things and, and in life, but not in the open source itself. So what is open source rather than uh, code that is published with, with a, a open source license? It's more than that. So open source is not the source, it's, it's, the, it's the way of life. It's helping others while you are getting help. Uh, you are for me i do things mostly for for my needs but then i usually find out that there are people who need the same thing so i'm really doing something that someone else has been al already thinking so it's really great that i do something to help myself and while doing that i help others it's a very healthy way of of learning things because you expose yourself. You expose yourself to mistakes and you push things and make mistakes and it's like trial and error and you enjoy doing it while uh, while uh, keeping the healthy balance uh, in it because um, while you are exposing yourself to mistakes you are prone to learning about them. If nobody sees your mistakes then you usually don't see them yourselves either and you are not ready to learn from them. It's a very social way to do things when you are not social. I for one, I am not usually social in real life. I'm social in the internet, but that's different because I don't see the people actually there. I see their usernames and avatars, but, but I don't need to think about how I look or how I speak. So for me it's it's very social but it's not social in the way in, in, in terms of uh, being actually there. You can uh, do it your own way. So it's it's bring bring something to the table because you are not alone. You can do it with others in your own terms. Um, it's Mostly for me, it's focusing. It's it, like I said, it's not not about code. It's it's uh, focusing to the good things. It's it's like a, I have an optimistic attitude in life. So it's helping others. It's the community. It's like this is one of the things that are not always about code. It's it's the people. It's it's the doing good things. Uh, it's focusing in positivity and it's it's helping others in my from my perspective uh, when you are doing open source you are improving things constantly improving things and for me it's mostly improving my own own uh, doing it's not just about making better code per se but it's it's um, replying to people in in most appropriate way and it's reacting to things Sometimes, sometimes it's challenging yourself because I need to criticize. I need to, uh, need to learn to criticize myself. It's, if someone doesn't like what I do, that's okay, and I need to first think that there is a reason why why they are saying this. Uh, it's like um, you are a little child and you are learning. You are constantly learning. Why why does he say that? So uh, it's improving a lot of things, not just not just code, but other things. Uh, it's letting go of your insecurities, because if you publish things openly uh, and everyone can read your things, uh, it's it. you need to let go, because otherwise that wouldn't happen. And I'm a perfectionist, I can say that, and I need to let go of that if I'm going to continue doing this. So it's a constant learning process about letting go. Uh, it's learning to say I was wrong and that issue is awesome. <laughs> so uh, we need to learn to say that I was wrong. Uh, I did the wrong decision here that affects 
hundreds of users because it's me being self-censored. So you need to kind of think that uh, I'm ready to be wrong. So open source is about that for me. It's building your own tools. Nevertheless, that, like I said, before open source or before that, uh, this time of open source, uh, you build mostly your own tools. But with open source, you can do the same. But you can do it better because other people, other companies can benefit your work. And you can do it all, to, uh, all together. And it doesn't mean that it should be uh, closed behind the curtain if it, it benefits all and if it's licensed openly. Uh, it's, it's the absolute freedom. You can, of course, choose what to publish and, and do things your way. But uh, for me, it has given this certain feeling that I'm not forced to do anything that I don't want to do. So, so it's really important to have that feeling while building open source. And of course, caring and loving is part of it in my, in my work. So the benefits in releasing things open source for WordPress is businesses like, like us, uh, there are many. Uh, one thing is you get true improvements from outside naturally, because if you release something publicly and for free, uh, people want to use it if it's good and if it fits for their purposes. So I've heard arguments against open source that some some are worried that if I publish this freely, it doesn't bring money to the table and I need to eat. But in my perspective, it's it's on the contrary. Open source and businesses are not like mut mutually exclusive. They can both happen. We we know Microsoft and Google and and other big companies and smaller companies that uh, are making money from open source projects or by providing open source and doing stuff on top of them like we do uh, the customer sides, sides with, with the customer sides. Uh, we at do it, don't really share openly the customer solutions, but we share everything that it's built on. So almost every little piece or plugin we have done is open and that's the main thing for us because we continue to improve those tools and release them for free and not for open. And directly it doesn't bring money to the table but partially because we are doing, doing everything by doing it so, so it's the most important thing. Um, open source for businesses is also like for pers from personal perspective the same thing. You are constantly improving the toolkit you have. Uh, if you have a startup team in your company and it's not uh, open source, it still is kind of the, the, the source you have and you continue on improving it. But by doing that openly and publicly, uh, others who may may have use for it, they can improve it too. So it's it's like uh, the spread is much larger than in your company. And it's also to know that that certain feeling, like in being with uh, WordPress community and uh, contributing things, it's that feeling you are giving back because the tools I showed you in in the slide previously so that we are using free tools we are using good tools so we kind of use open source tools and if we are not releasing our own things we, we, we are not forced to do that but if we are not doing that we are not giving back so I just like the feeling that that it brings uh, also it increases transparency openness and trust uh, all in the same sentence and it also means that your company will have good values through that. Uh, you leave your mark and it adds e uh, meaning to your work because for me it's like uh, if I'm coding something, it's like uh, nobody's uh, tracking like with the smart 
smart clock or some smart watch or something. If you listen to music and it doesn't go to last of or at other uh, social media or something, some place to track it, or if you go running and you forgot your clock, for some people it's like I never, I have to run again <laughs> because I didn't have my have my watch with me. Uh, I didn't track that run. So for me, it's like the same thing. If I code something and don't release it, don't make uh, a GitHub rep repository for it then it doesn't exist, nobody knows about it. So that's just one perspective. Uh, it ensures that it's there, it's maintainable. And for example, if, if in your company there are things uh, that needs maintaining, needs uh, to develop further, needs something uh, so that your customer projects won't get legacy or like technical debt, then it's good to be have it as open so that it, it's it's there. It also, from a customer perspective, prevents vendor locking. So, which means that uh, if the customer decides that you are too expensive, I don't want to do this with with you anymore. I want to go to the cheaper company or something like that. Uh, they can do that because it's based on open source. So that's also good. But if it's all good, why why isn't everyone doing this? Why uh, why I don't see uh, GitHub repositories for every everything or something? Only only for those certain certain pieces. That's that's a good question to ask. There are many reasons. So number one thing for me is uh, fear because that's something I've struggled with also. Uh, there are many reasons uh, that are all based on fear, but most of the time I hear that it's not ready yet. It's not good enough. Uh, it's something that I've done for myself and I'm sure nobody will use it. Uh, there are lots of mistakes I've, I've probably done. Uh, someone might see those mistakes. They will comment angrily, use it, use it react instead of view or something like that or uh, it's it's the fear uh, it's the fear that we all have we don't want to make it public we are fear uh, we are afraid uh, what it will cause and it's the it's like the base uh, base feeling there but those are mostly just thoughts that are not real because uh, this is not about open source like i said it's it's about life and people don't look each other as careful we think they do they don't look and go through our code and try to find mistakes so it's not like that they are insecurities and anxieties about regarding the perfectionism or uh, imposter syndrome or anything you might have so it's not about the open source itself and that's why i say you should always fight the fear because i'm fighting a fear all the time and that's why i put put uh, repositories public even the smallest things because i know that it makes me feel better because i'm uh, making myself vulnerable vulnerable uh, in purpose so for me uh, these fears and worries are pointless and they should be ignored in some extent. Uh, of course, you should should do what you think is best, but uh, I think they do not exist. Those fears do not exist. And it, it should not be perfect. It should not be ready. It should not be complete. It's, it never is. Uh, I have committed completely pointless and unfinished things in my repositories and some of those things never got finished. Some of those I just uh, archived them because they got outdated or I didn't need them anymore. But it's there and someone might find it useful, so that's why I do it. So it's okay. It's really okay. Because uh, I think you matter and your code matters in this regard. Uh, it's important what you do. If you code uh, beautiful things, you shouldn't just uh, like uh, 
be that musician. I'm a musician, uh, like a hobby musicians, and I never release any of my songs. It's that's one song that I think it's perfect, but it helps me if someone says this is great. You should do this more. So that's what I'm saying. It matters that the things you do matters. Then there is time and commitment, which is uh, which is a hard hard. There is a a bit a pun there, but it's uh, time is something we all have the same amount, but we have to choose. And actions like pushing and committing your own open source code actually takes some time, but not really. Uh, most companies, individuals have have uh, incorporated some way, some workflow to do that. So it do, shouldn't take extra time, but the time to actually commit and do things uh, is a bit trickier because I haven't been commit to, committed to things as much I, as I want, like in, in the WordPress world. I haven't been in the accessibility team. I just uh, stalk and lurk what they are talking about. But I, I know I should, I, I could commit, but uh, I have chosen to commit to the CSS side of, of uh, open source and it's taking my time and commitment at the moment. But you can choose and it's, it's great, you can choose. And you should always think about what is important to you and not what is important to others, but what do you want to do, what do you want to do to help. And that I think it's, it's the core in, in the open source. Uh, it's also about insufficient tools or documentation. This is very, very uh, common that you have these great things, but nobody knows how to use. There are some, like, like uh, first five I found uh, about those issues in different repositories, how to use it, how to, how to make something of it, because some people just post their code and there's empty readme and it's not really usable. Uh, so we should focus on that. So, um, yeah, these are memes I made, I made myself. I'm so proud. <laughs> I see this sometimes, uh, that there is not, it is like open or free, but there is not much to do with it. Yeah, I can do this all day. <laughs> yeah. Um, open source is not marketing. It's sometimes people or companies release a working model or something like open source. Uh, this example is actually open source. It's really good and it's just a screenshot to like uh, simulate this thing and people make money of course with uh, support programs and stuff like that and uh, different plans and it's good if self-hosted is, is like fully open, you can fully use it. But sometimes it's, it's not like that. The self-hosted doesn't have any documentation or it cannot be used. So it's the wrong way of doing things in my way because open source should be really open. And that's why they are, I, I think that's why they are FOSS free and open source software movement. And then there, are, then there is uh, FLOSS, which is free and libre, libre open, like open office, libre office. Uh, you have two teams, both create open source, but other have more commercial co goals in it. So I think open source can and should be mar marketed, but uh, it's not really marketing itself. Uh, it can be used in marketing, but it should be used properly and wisely. If you say, uh, I have this open source tool you can use, and then you're asking money and monthly, uh, monthly payment to use that, or you don't have the proper documentation, uh, it's like open source, but it's used for marketing and not really, really about the core values, I think. Open source should not be over commercialized. It's, it's like there is a certain conduct you should use if you, if you are publishing open source. So some takeaways about this all. Uh, don't make it too hard. Don't make it uh, rocket science. Don't 
write a proper documentation that people can use and uh, could can do things with with a really low bar and without a tight learning curve. Um, you should take it as a challenge. I I take it as a challenge every day. I like to expose myself to learn about myself uh, ways of doing things and in my company and in my personal life so it should be a challenge it should be a constant challenge uh, you should challenge yourself to be to be wrong to learn uh, to improve things to uh, have a, a discussion in a github issue or something then it's uh, a habit it should be every day life and habit for me it's like everything i do i try to think first that uh, this how should i publish this openly how should i uh, uh, document this and how how could this benefit others just me even though i just said that you should do things for yourself uh, there's a certain aspect that if it gets good you can also uh, think about how to do it as a habit and as a part of your life and it's also about the mentality like uh, how do you think of things uh, do you want to help or do you want to just uh, do it with a tunnel vision so it's it's like a way of living in a sense uh, if you haven't contributed much or started your own repositories uh, before you should start small, uh, just push your index HTML or something and make it public and see how it look, looks like. Uh, write a good readme. I have started a couple of repositories that are just the readme, like awesome CSS or something, uh, list of tools or something like that. Yeah, this is this is not starting small, but uh, you can start that way too. <laughs> so, oops, went too far here. Yeah, do the marketing wisely. Uh, open source is not really uh, in my world. Uh, the term for marketing. It's something that uh, encourages people to use the tools and you can show things uh, that are in core values in your company, but it should be do you should be doing that wisely. Uh, like I said, document and help out. Uh, always make good documentations or make it uh, easy to contact or, or leave an issue, help people out to do, use your stuff. Uh, back up your things to Git or some other version control. I think Git is the most popular and people should use it, but back up your things. It's very good uh, to start uh, like uh, having the habit. And I confess I'm, I'm a bit phony because uh, my GitHub card, card shows every day commits, but I haven't really done all those by myself. I back up things to Git a lot. And one of those is uh, simple note Git, which I re recommend. Simple note to Git, I actually, uh, which is a cron job that uh, backups all my notes from simple note to Git. So that's why they are commit even though I'm I'm on a holiday or traveling or something. I still commit every day. <laughs> so do good things, be kind. Kindness is always good. Uh, I always take a step that uh, how do I respond to this person who is criticizing me or not criticizing me the most kind way because you never lose if you are kind. And you what you, you do what you do and and you do matter. So that's about it. Thank you so much.